This is the beginning of the questions now where acids and bases are coming together. And this says we have a solution, ammonium chloride, what effect will adding NH3 have on the pH of the solution? And I don't think we need to spend as much time on this. On a question like this, when it just is asking for increase, decrease, stay the same, you need to think about what, at, what you're adding and what the effect will be on the pH. So blah, 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 you start with something, who cares, <laughs> all right? In this kind of question, you just wanna know what ammonia will do to your solution. So you kinda of have to know if ammonia is acidic, basic, or neutral. Do you think that ammonia will be more of a base, more of an acid, or be neutral? Base, yeah, I see forming it there, that's good enough. <laughs> base, ammonia, <laughs> and if you're just thinking about that or the destructor or whatever, that's fine too. But anyway, base, ammonia, classic uh, weak base and stuff like that. Bases, if you add them, will increase the pH, and that's, in, sorry. Okay, there we go. They, there we go. I had a little spasm, big surprise. Anyway, ammonia is a base, all right? So you don't need to calculate anything here. You just need to look at what you're adding, all right? You could say 0 0.010 moles or something like that, whatever. You're adding a base, and bases make the pH go up. If that would have been ammonium, an acid, then you would have had a decrease in the pH. There are a few substances that won't change the pH. They're the conjugates of strong acids, strong bases, like NaCl. Um, any questions on that? Now, here's another question. We've got another solution of something. Who cares? We're adding NaCl to it. What will be the effect on the pH? Well, if the things you're adding are conjugates of strong acids, strong bases, no effect on pH. So when I look at this problem, I know that Na plus is the conjugate of NaOH, a strong base. And I know that Cl minus is the conjugate of HCl, a strong acid. Remember, conjugates is just plus or minus an H plus or OH minus in this case. So that's why Na plus comes from NaOH, Cl minus from HCl. So both of those are conjugates of strong acids and strong bases. And that's one of the times where you'll have no effect on pH. Now there's only a couple of ions that will have no effect. For the metals, it's sodium, potassium, and lithium because there's sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide. And for the anions, it's chloride, as well as bromide iodide, and nitrate and perchlorate. So those species are the only ones, for us anyway, that won't affect your pH, all right? They have to come from strong acids and strong bases to not have an effect. Most things will have an effect, but these are some that won't. Any questions on that? Sweet. The next question, it says, what's gonna be an ideal buffer solution, all right? And again, in a buffer solution, you're just gonna have a weak acid in its conjugate base or a weak base in its conjugate acid. So if you look through these, you wanna first make sure that they're conjugates. And also, you wanna pull out, once again, strong acids, strong bases. So I can't emphasize enough how knowing strong acids and strong bases is really cool. So if you look through this list, sodium hydroxide, strong base, not gonna be a buffer. HCl, strong acid, not gonna be a buffer. Here's HCl, strong acid, and KOH, both strong systems, no way. So that leaves right away then A or C. And you wanna try and find then which one of those are conjugates of each other. And again, conjugate just means plus or minus an H plus. And I'm hoping you can see that on answer C, this has uh, more carbon than this one does. So these aren't conjugates, all right? Those might be an acid and base, but they're not conjugates of each other. Like you can't, if you took an H plus away from here, you'd have CH3CO2, all right? And that's not CH3CO2. If you took an H away there, it would be HCO2, something like that. So up here, this is a weak acid. We saw HCN earlier. 
K plus goes away, it's a spectator. C and minus would be the conjugate of that one, related by that. So A would be the best answer here. So. Any questions on that one? So knowing the strong acid, strong bases, in addition to knowing which equation to use up here, it will also help you figure out if it can make a buffer. And again, strong acids and strong bases do not make buffers. Don't use them in buffers. Uh, that being said, uh, 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 they'll also help you with the neutral ions. So like the conjugates make neutral pH solutions. So that's why I really make a big deal knowing those five strong acids, three strong bases. Any questions on All right, now, speaking of buffers, here's a question now where we do have a buffer solution, and now this is one I am gonna spend, I'll give you some time to work on this. We wanna know the pH of a buffer that has ammonium and ammonia. So back to the original thing, ammonium and ammonia are conjugates, all right? Ammonium, NH4 plus, has more hydrogen, so that's gonna be the acid and ammonia, NH3, has less hydrogen, that's gonna be the base. And Ka is given for the acid. Now there's several ways to do this, but like I said in lecture, pH equals pKa plus log base over acid is absolutely the way to go. This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And Henderson-Hasselbalch just rocks for buffers, <laughs> all right? I totally discourage you from thinking about any other way. You can do it other ways, but I certainly recommend doing it this way. You're after the pH, you've got a Ka. Base over acid can be moles per liter over moles per liter or moles over moles. So see if you can figure out which of those answers would be the right one here for this, room, for this particular situation.
Okay, so on this problem, Henderson Hasselbach, absolutely the way to go. And pH equals pK plus log base over acid. pKa is just minus log of Ka, all right? So minus log 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10th is something you'll do in your calculator. And then this base over acid can be, in this case, I would recommend uh, molarity over molarity. This is the base. This is the acid. Remember, bases have less hydrogen than acids do. But what is the log, L-O-G, the log of one? Zero. Zero, that's right. In this problem, because the concentrations are the same for base over acid, you end up log of 0.2 over 0.2 is like log of one. And log of one is zero. So in this particular problem, pH is literally equal to pKa, all right? If your concentrations are equal, like they are in this problem, then pH and pKa are the same. So 9.25 is not only the pKa for the Ka of for ammonium, but it's also the pH of the solution because our concentrations are the same. If we added more ammonia, all right, made this number bigger, the pH would get bigger as well, more basic. On the other hand, if you added more ammonium, the acid, then the pH would start decreasing because acids make the pHs go down. But initially, all right, for this buffer, your pH should start out about 9.25. Any questions? So minus log Ka equals pKa. If you need to go opposite, it's no problem. 10 raised to the power of minus pKa will give you the Ka back again. All right. This question is very similar, except now we don't have the same concentrations, all right? You can reuse the pKa from last time because it is the same buffer but we have more base, more ammonia. So think about what that means for this particular problem and see if you can calculate what the pH of our new buffer is.
So in this problem, like the last problem, you need to find pKa. So minus log 5.6 to the minus 10, to the last problem was 9.25. But in the last problem, the ammonia and the ammonium concentrations were equal, so pH and pK were the same. This one, we've got more base. And if you add base, your pH should become more basic, which means larger. And the only answer, which is larger than 9.25, 9.65. So let's predict that that's gonna be the answer. Now the ultimate way would be to go pH equals pKa 9.25 plus log. And again, base over acid can be moles over moles, or for this problem, I would do molarity over molarity. So base, this one, 0 0.50 divided by acid, 0 0.20. You can find the log of that, and that comes out to be positive 0 0.40. So add that to 9.25, and sure enough, 9.65 is the answer. So again, you add more base, the pH should become more basic, all right? And that's what happened. It went from 9.25 to a more basic 9.65. If you would have added uh, that much acid, we would have expected the pH to be lower than 9.25. But this is a base, so it should be more basic. Any questions? Now, in this problem, we're trying to figure out the amount of sodium acetate needed to be added to so much acetic acid to make a buffer of pH 4.0, all right? So in this problem, we have a base and we have an acid. Now the acid, it says acid, so hopefully that's like no big on the other hand, in this problem, we want to add the base, and the conjugate base of acetic acid is acetate ion. So this is the base, and this is the acid. And the question is, uh, how do you get from one to the other? We want to have a pH of 4. Now, I'm going to give you a hint on this problem. We want the pH to be 4. We can find pKa by going minus log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And on this problem, it's very helpful to remember that the moles n equal concentration times volume. And you want exactly 0.1 liters. Wait a minute. Did I? I wait a minute. I think I might be missing. Yes, sorry. I was thinking of one of the other questions. Sorry. <clears throat> Remember that moles equals concentration times volume. But honestly, that I don't think it's going to help on this problem. So let me help you a little bit more since I spaz so bad there. So the base will be 0 0.10 <clears throat> moles per liter times uh, the volume. What am I doing? 0.10 base, and you're looking for volume. All right, so you want moles, okay, I was right. Wow, I'm really sorry, gang. Moles N equals concentration times volume. So moles per liter of base times volume in liters of base is gonna be the moles part. And then the bottom, you can do the same kind of thing. You've got moles per liter, that concentration of acetic acid, times 0.1, there we go. So you have everything in here except for the V. That's what I was trying to get to. Sorry about that. So see if you can solve for the V, the volume of base required. Sorry, that was definitely dropping the ball. On that one, so. Ask questions if you have them too.
in this problem, which I botched the explanation of, I really apologize. Uh, what I'm trying to point out is that this base over acid has lots of different uses. And at first, it might be tempting to go, well, pH equals pK plus log base over acid in concentration. But because both the base and the acid are 0 0.10, you'd initially see pH equals pK plus log of 1, log of 1 is 0, and that doesn't make sense. So the numbers here for the volume are going to be different. Uh, moles equals concentration, moles per liter times liters. And that's kind of what you want to, you want to use moles of base and moles of acid. And we're going to rewrite both of those moles as some type of concentration times the volume. So they tell us that for the acid, the acetic acid, you have 100 milliliters, which is 0.1 liters. What we don't know here is the volume of base required to get this pH happening, all right? So in this problem, pKa minus log Ka is 4.74. So you'd have 4.0 equals 4.74 plus log, and then it's like 0.1 times x divided by 0.1 times 0.1. So the only thing you don't know is this number. It'll come out to be a number in liters. And so uh, this number is the 0.1 times 0.1, just 0.01. And we don't know the volume of the base. So when you solve for it, it comes out to be 0 0.0182, which is initially in liters. You multiply that by 1,000 to get 18 milliliters in this particular problem. So this is an alternative way to do these kind of things. If the volume of the base, the acetate, would have been 100 milliliters, just like the volume of the acid, then base over acid would have been equal to each other, and you would have had pH and pK being the same. But the final pH here is more acidic than pKa. So that means that the amount of acid, the part at the bottom, is going to have to be bigger than the amount of base in the top. And sure enough, it is 100 milliliters greater than 18 milliliters. But the punchline here is that it's totally cool to rewrite moles as concentration times volume. It's a volume of the base and acid are different. Sometimes this is a cool way to help out on these kind of problems. Any questions on that? Okay. Here's a graph, and someone did it, and they forgot to do a good job marking what the graph was, all right? Uh, the pH scale is the y-axis. We'll say it goes from 0 to 14. And the volume scale, let's say it goes from 0 to 40. Which one of these combinations does this graph represent? So to figure this question out, let's start with the first part. And you look at zero milliliters, all right? And you think about if your pH is uh, basic or acidic. And you can totally tell that this pH is starting out basic. It's a number greater than seven. If the scale goes zero to 14, then this will be some kind of a basic pH. So we're definitely starting with a base, so that's going to be answer B, D, or E. We are not starting with an acid. Acids would start like down here, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, second thing, 
we're not looking at titrations between weak bases and weak acids. They're complicated. You have to know uh, which one you have, how strong they are, stuff like that. So if nothing else, I automatically will say, don't even think about this one, all right? Uh, that being said, if you look here at the final amount of uh, pH and stuff where, the, where this titration is, it's pretty acidic, all right? This is down here getting close to one. And the only ones that go down to one are gonna be the strong acids. So for all of those reasons, answer E is flat out two. First of all, I give you my word of honor. I'm not gonna make you do titrations with weak bases, weak acids, or weak acids, weak bases. Uh, second of all, your final pH is very acidic, so that's gonna be a strong acid. The last thing you need to answer this between if it's B or D is you look at the equivalence point. And equivalence points are pretty helpful. If you have a strong base and a strong acid reacting together, like NaOH plus HCl, all right, they annihilate each other, and their products are totally uh, on the product side. And products, as we've seen already, of NaOH and HCl would be things like water and NaCl, all right? Well, water has a pH of seven, and NaCl doesn't affect the pH. And as a matter of fact, none of the conjugates of strong acids and strong acids affect pH. So if this was a strong base and we're titrating with a strong acid, the equivalence point, the middle part of the steepest part, that black dot right there, that would be equal to seven. And this is certainly not equal to seven. So if you have a weak base plus strong acid, that equivalence point, this part right here, that's going to be dominated by the conjugate acid of the weak base. And weak base conjugate acids are probably not gonna be super strong, but they're acidic, all right? So that equivalence point, the middle point of that steep part right there, will be acidic with a weak base with strong acid. So if you don't have, if you have a graph and you don't label it and stuff, which totally happens, no problem. You're starting basic, not acid, so you've got a base. Uh, this is very rare, these kind of combinations. And then finally, the equivalence point with a weak base should be acidic, all right? That conjugate acid acts up at that point and makes your pH acidic. Likewise, a weak acid plus strong base, which looks kind of like that, its equivalence point will be a little bit basic. The weak acid now it has a conjugate base that's acting up at equivalence, uh, making the equivalence point basic. So between those couple of things there, you can figure out what these kind of titration graphs look like, which is kind of cool. Any questions? Now, here's a question. We're mixing some acids and bases together. Now on a question like this, there are a couple ways to do it, but what I recommend is that you think about this as if it was a titration problem. And this problem, I believe, was actually uh, question number one from problem set three. So in this question, HCl, a strong acid, is reacting with ammonia, a weak base. So this in the titration graph would be like a weak base plus strong acid titration. It's not really a titration, you're just dumping the chemicals together. But if you know it's a weak base and a strong acid, which we do, you can then figure out the moles of weak base and strong acid, volume in liters times molarity. That'll tell you the moles of both, and from there you can find the appropriate equation. So from all of that, see if you can knock this problem out. Notice that the volumes and the concentrations are equal. So if they're equal, that means you're at equivalence. You have just as many moles of strong acid as you have moles of strong base.
So in this problem, what I would do, like I said, is think about it as if it was a titration, even though it's not a titration. And I'm doing that because this is mole, this is a strong acid, and this is a weak base. So on that titration sheet, you can think about it as weak base plus strong acid. And I do that because once you figure out the moles of strong acid and the moles of weak base, you can find like which region you're in. So in this problem, you would take the liters, 0 0.015, times molarity to find the moles. But like I said, you can probably see here that the volumes are the same and the molarities are the same. That means that the moles of weak base and moles of strong acid are the same as well. So this is going to be equivalence. And at this point, the ammonia and the HCl have knocked each other out, and you have ammonium and chloride. Chloride is pH boring, so ammonium is the active species here. And ammonium is an acid. It's the conjugate acid of ammonia, the base. So all the weak acids, something like minus log square root Ka times Ca. Now we don't have Ka, but we have Kb. So Kw divided by Kb will give us our Ka. The concentration of the acid, I would take the moles of weak base, you could take moles of strong acid here, same thing. And you want to divide them by the total volume in liters. So 15 plus 15 is 30, that would be 0 0.030 liters. If you plug all of that in, and this is the math part, blah, 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 pH 4.98. However, if you think about the last problem with the graph, we said that uh, weak base plus strong acid at equivalence, where the moles are equal, should be acidic. Well, this is a weak base plus strong acid, and we're at equivalence. So your pH should be acidic, all right? The first three are probably not gonna fly. It's probably gonna be one of these two. In this case, you can see 4.98. So that'll make your life a little bit easier and make a sense of what you're seeing. Again, the equation that was used in the lab is kind of funky, I totally dig it. But it really is just minus log square root Ka times Ca. And anywhere you get there is great. The total volume in the denominator is it, the only kind of funky thing about it. Most of the other parts are pretty chill. Any questions on that? Yeah. running out of time. So Jonah, do you mind taking a picture of this man? I'm sorry to force you to sure. fascist instructor. So. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks. We have time for at least one more problem. And there's actually three more problems. So I've been talking too much. Now in this question, we're adding a strong base to acetic acid, and it's asking for the pH of the resulting solution. Now this problem, there's a couple different ways you can do it. What I would probably do is think about it as a weak acid plus strong base titration, and figure out the region you're in based on the moles. Grams divided by molar mass gives you moles here. Volume times liters times moles per liter would give you moles, and you can go from there. But you could also do this as a type of a buffer expression. Uh, but anyway, use whatever method you think is necessary and see what you can do with this problem.
definitely running out of time, gang, so I'm sorry about this. Uh, get your cameras ready if you'd like to take pictures of the things I'm going to show you. Alternatively, you don't have your camera, you don't feel like taking a picture, the complete lecture for the exam review also is me talking over all this. So if the things I say here are kind of fast, I'm really sorry, man. It's just fascist time. Anyway, in this problem, the moles come out to be equal for the strong base and weak acid. So this is equivalence. Equivalence means that they both wiped each other out. So the acetic acid has turned itself into acetate, a weak base. pH for weak bases looks something like 14 plus log square root Kb times Cb. So Kb can be rewritten as Ka, Kw excuse me, over Ka. And Cb, the concentration of the base, you can use the moles of weak acid, and again, divide by the total volume in liters. There's only one liters here, the 0.1 liters of the acetic acid. But if you do all this, then you come out to be 8.87. And again, if you're at equivalence, the weak acid and strong base are gone, but the conjugate base is active. So you should have a basic pH. Uh, the last two questions, which we just don't have time for, I'm sorry. It says, what's the pH of the solution now between a strong acid and sodium cyanide is actually a weak base? I give you the Ka there just to mess with you a little bit. But this is essentially now, you can think about it as a weak base plus strong acid titration. So find the moles, you'll find that this is pre-equivalence. You have more moles of cyanide than you have HCl. So the equation looks something like Henderson-Hasselbach, pH equals uh, pK plus log base over acid. In this case, you're actually at the half equivalence point, so pH and pK are the same. Some surprise there. And then the last one here, we've got a strong base and a weak acid, ammonium, the weak acid of ammonium. It gives you the Kb, and it says, what's the pH of the resulting solution? So again, like I would do before, is find the moles of strong base and the moles of weak acid and see what's happening. And if you do that, this comes out to be pre-equivalence region, all right? There's different ways to write the expression. You can write it as pH uh, equals pKa plus log. If you don't have pKa, you can solve it different ways. But anyway, the pH at the end comes out to be 9.08. Again, I apologize for kind of rushing through this last part. If you look it over later and you're like, what the? Uh, definitely reach out to me and stuff and I'll help. There's also the complete lectures and stuff too where I do talk about this in more detail. I won't mention public enemy, I don't think anyway in the, that part. Any questions on any of this? Awesome. All right, have a great day. I'll see you guys Wednesday morning. Thanks for being here. Stay dry as much as possible.